Meat Boy is back. Today we're discussing steak cooking temperatures. What degree Fahrenheit equates to what doneness of the steak? And I worked at a steakhouse for a little bit as a waiter. We would actually ask the customer what color steak they wanted because you know everyone has their own interpretation of what rare is, of what medium rare is. So the way we graded it there was blue rare is completely raw in the middle and it's cool. Rare is still raw in the middle, but it's hot. Medium rare is mostly red and there's a little bit of pink on the edges of the steak. Medium is a tiny bit of red in the middle and it's pink to the edges. That's what most people want and it's kind of funny because people order a rare steak, but what they actually want is a medium steak. That was pretty common. That was probably half of the orders I had every day. Medium well is going to be mostly pink throughout the steak and then well done is obviously a completely gray steak. Now there are deviations between those and someone might want a medium well plus steak, which is just a tiny bit of pink in the middle. 99% of the time, however, you know, we just stuck with those six temperatures at Del Frisco's and there were only a handful of times where people would order a blue rare steak and very rarely did people want a truly rare steak. I personally think most steaks are best cooked blue rare or rare. If a person does prefer you know, more cooked meat, then you have to be careful with what cut you pick because a filet mignon is going to fare much better than a New York strip when cooked well done. And people did tend to order filet mignons well done when I was at that steakhouse. The temperature that equates to a steak's doneness is the finishing internal temperature. This gets very tricky because if you want a steak to be rare, which is about 123 degrees Fahrenheit, you have to stop the cooking process at around 118 degrees, and sometimes you get it higher or lower. It takes a bit of experimenting depending on your personal oven and cookware. To get the steak to medium rare, you have to stop the cooking around 122, and then it goes up to like 126. For medium, you want to stop cooking at 125 and get that steak to 130. And then for medium, well, you want to stop cooking around 127, 128 and get it up to like 132, 133. Even when you cook a steak well done, you don't want to overheat it. You want to get it just to that well done temperature of maybe like high 130s, maybe 140 degrees. So with such a small temperature difference, you really have to pay attention when cooking your steaks. Use an instant read thermometer because 20, 30 seconds cook time is the difference between a rare and a medium steak in some cases. So I'm gonna show you guys the steaks. We're gonna go out to the grill, get a crust on the steaks, and depending on how hot the fire is, we could either finish them in the oven or we could finish them on the grill. Today we have some chuck steaks. These are from Frankie's Free Range Meat and some of you might not have seen chuck steaks before. I think I might have seen them in a supermarket a couple times. So on the left here we have two regular grass-fed chuck steaks that have, you know, some marbling, not really a lot. Uh, they're relatively lean, but you know, for grass-fed it's pretty good. On the right, we have three Wagyu chuck steaks, and these have much more marbling, very fatty, very rich, very tender. And the reason we're using three Wagyu steaks is because when we go, you know, medium, medium well, and well done, this is still gonna be somewhat edible well done, whereas if you take this to well done, you're not gonna have too much fun eating it. So I think what we're gonna do here is rare, medium rare, medium, medium well and well done. And the reason we're not gonna do a blue rare steak is because I think that's super duper simple. <laughs> you just get a sear on the outside. All of these steaks are actually going to be blue rare before we uh, throw them in the oven or, or finish cooking them internally. So these uh, grass fed chuck steaks are, I think around 13 or $14 a pound on Frankie's free range meat. And uh, the Wagyu is still very, very cheap for Wagyu. I think these are around uh, $24 a pound on Frankie's free range meat. Uh, so let's get these out of the plastic and let's go out to the grill. Look at these beauties, man. $24 a pound, that's unheard of. Holy boys, now that's a fire. And if you guys haven't seen my how to turn a gas grill into a wood fire grill video, something like that, uh, you can check it out. It's definitely not safe. But what I did here was I took some uh, dry seasoned firewood, 
I put it over my uh, gas burners and now we have basically like a pit of hell that is fairly dangerous but it will get us delicious wood-fired flavor and a very nice crust on our steaks. So this is how you basically sear the outside of a steak but the inside is completely raw. You get a really, really hot temperature. My grill grates are actually to the side here off the grill because if you put these grates on the grill when this is heating up, they'll actually get too hot. So now we put these back on. So these Wagyu steaks, really, really fatty. So these you want to be careful with and I don't really want to keep them directly over the fire. As soon as that fat starts rendering, it's just going to completely engulf it in flames. When you have a leaner grass-fed steak, not really like this truck roll because this truck roll still has some fat on it, but sometimes you want to add a little bit of butter, a little bit of some type of cooking fat to caramelize the crust. We took these steaks out of the fridge so they're cold on the inside. That basically means we'll get a crust on these steaks before the inside starts cooking at all. What I like about Chuck is that there's three different parts and they have three different flavors. So you have the big part that tastes a certain way, you have this little part in the middle here, and then that part that tastes different. So I'm not going to go crazy with uh, the crust on these steaks. I'm going to take them off. The only thing you really need to do this accurately is an instant read thermometer. I think these are around $20, $30 right now. And as I said, since these steaks came out of the fridge, they're going to be essentially raw in the middle. So the Wagyu steak in the middle is 70 degrees. You know, this is 70. They're, they're around 70 degrees. And this is probably even cooler because it's a thicker steak. Yeah, these are around 60 degrees in the center. So what we're going to do is put these on racks, throw them in the oven. Uh, we're going to put both ovens on 300 degrees, except since we want to take these two steaks to rare and medium rare, these are going to come out much sooner than these. Although, since these steaks are smaller and thinner, it might not be that much of a time difference. For the two chuck steaks at the top, we want them to be rare and medium rare. So the rare steak, we want to take it out around 116, 117, and for the medium rare steak, around 119, 120. For the three Wagyu steaks on the bottom, we want the medium, the medium well, and the well done. So medium, you want to take it out around 124. For medium well, probably 127, 128, and then well done, somewhere in the low to mid 130. So this might seem like a bit strenuous and stressful but we're really just hanging out for 10-15 minutes and then the steaks are going to get really close to the temperature so we're going to start probing with the instant read thermometer to make sure we don't go too far so i actually put on post-it notes what temperatures i want and the only difficult part about this is after we take these out is going to be keeping track of the temperature it finishes at so one of our chuck steaks is at 116. This is going to be our rare steak. I'll take this out. Man, that was stressful. I feel like I'm working as a catering chef again, uh, but we did it. So our rare steak we took out at around 117 degrees internal. And this isn't perfect because, you know, the steak isn't completely even thickness. You know, the thinner parts are going to be higher temperature. So when I say 117, I mean between like 116 and 118 degrees internal. Then it went up to about 122, 123 internal. The medium rare steak, we took it out at about 120 degrees internally and it went up to, you know, 125-ish. The first Wagyu steak, which is supposed to be our medium steak, we took it out at 123 and we're hoping it went up to about 127, 128. Second Wagyu steak, our medium well steak, we took it out high 120s, you know, 127, 128, and hopefully it goes into the 132-ish range. And then our last steak, which is supposed to be our well-done Wagyu steak, we took it out at about 132 internal temperature and hopefully finished around 140 degrees. Uh, so let's cut into each of these and see how well we did from a temperature gradient perspective. I'm, I'm excited. Frankie boy's a pretty good cook. Things are looking good from what I can see. From what I can see. I took a quick look at these steaks and we undershot it a bit. 
So originally we wanted rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, and well done. What we actually have here is blue rare, rare, medium rare, medium, and medium well, which is fine. You still get an idea of the gradient. Uh, so let's take a look at the first chuck steak. And most people would consider this uh, almost raw, almost blue rare. Uh, I personally consider this rare because as we said, rare is red in the center and it's hot. And you can tell this meat has been cooked. You know, to consider this blue rare is what most people might actually do, but true blue rare would be cold in the center, not cooked at all. But again, that's up for your own interpretation. The second steak we look at is definitely cooked a little bit more. Uh, you could tell it's not as deeply red colored. So to me, this could be considered a rare or a medium rare. Honestly, this is probably my favorite temperature. It's very difficult to get this correct because the difference between having the steak almost raw and having the steak be this like pink reddish hue throughout is only a few degrees, but this is really, really delicious. You have the best combination of a raw juicy texture and the cooked flavor. So now we move on to the Wagyu steaks. There's definitely a little bit of a difference in color, but I would consider this one uh, a medium rare because it's cooked throughout the entire steak, but you know, there's no real gradient. You know, there's a little bit of red, a little bit of blood in the center of the steak, but it's mostly pink throughout. And it's definitely cooked more than this one. Uh, so I would say this is what most people consider medium rare. Some people might think this is a little bit too red, but again, regardless of what steak temperature we're looking at, people are gonna have a variance going up or down one gradient. Uh, so this one is the medium steak, which is completely pink throughout. You know, there's no real red in here. It's completely pink. You know, if you look at the difference, you know, there's a substantial difference between each of these steaks. You know, when I put this one down and you look at this one, you're like, oh, well, Frank, doesn't that kind of look the same? Well, when you put them side by side, not really. This one is medium rare. This one is medium. But again, you know, I did a really good job here and there's no real gray on the edges. It's kind of like perfect throughout. And then we go on to the medium well, which is probably still uh, a little bit undercooked uh, for most people. So uh, this is actually pretty gray. Uh, there's a little bit of pink in here. I would say this is kind of like the perfect temperature to serve a steak at if you're trying to give it to someone who you know doesn't usually eat rare meat. Any more than this where you get more grain here, uh, you kind of ruin the steak. So I guess I have enough steak for about a week. Hopefully this gives you guys an idea of the variances in steak cooking temperatures. You know, so what you end up doing is, hey, one day take the steak off at 118, one day take it off at 122, mess around with the different temperatures, see which ones you like the most, and then moving forward, after you play with it a few times, make a few mistakes, then you know how to cook the steak perfectly just how you like it. That instant read thermometer being the key tool here. But, you know, if you don't want to get an instant read thermometer, then you can just do it by timing. It might take a little bit more messing around every time, you know, okay, well, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes in the oven, whatever. So let me know how you guys like this. Uh, definitely check out Frankie's freerangemeat.com for the highest quality, most affordable animal foods online. We have so many exciting products available now. So definitely check out that as well as Frankie's Free Range Foods, uh, which we will hopefully have things like the pemmican, the meat granola, uh, cod liver oil back in stock relatively soon. Uh, so if you guys could please leave me a comment down below, drop a like on the video, and above all, please share it on social media if you can. We will be doing a live stream later around 3 p.m. Eastern time on the channel Frank Tufano. Uh, so I'll join you guys for a Q&A.